If you're a fan of overlay mosaic crochet and you've always wondered if you can make your projects reversible, I'm here to say absolutely! I've tweaked my anchored double crochet stitch for this reversible technique and I'd like to teach you how to make your overlay mosaic crochet projects reversible too. So let's get started! First of all, I'd like to tell you that this reversible technique is building on my continuous overlay mosaic crochet technique, which I call COM. Now that I've developed a reversible style, I'm calling it Reversible Continuous Overlay Mosaic Crochet, or REVCOM for short. Here I have two continuous overlay mosaic crochet swatches, and they look the same on the front. But when we turn them over, we can see that one of them is reversible and the other is not. Now I'd like to tell you that you can also use traditional mosaic crochet, overlay mosaic crochet, with the ends. You don't have to use my continuous technique, but you can make your overlay mosaic crochet projects reversible as well and still have all those ends. I'd also like to tell you that, as you can see on the back, we only have single crochets, or at least they look like single crochets on the back. Some of them were anchored double crochets. But on the back of the reversible swatch, we have a lot more stitches coming down. We still have the same number of stitches on the front, but we have more stitches on the back. So this reversible technique will use more yarn, and it all depends on the number of double crochets or anchored double crochets that you have in your pattern, how much more yarn you'll need for your particular project. I'm going to estimate anywhere from 15 to 30% more yarn to make it reversible. I'm excited to share a new pattern with you today. This is my persimmon flower scarf. This is made in my RevCom technique, and the pattern already includes all of the yarn that you will need to make this scarf reversible. So you won't have to do any figuring of how much extra yarn you would need. As you can see, the front and the back look similar, but not exactly the same. I've designed this scarf with narrow rows, so if you find a mistake, you can quickly fix it and move on. I also designed this scarf with a lighter weight yarn and a smaller hook because I find that the reversible technique tends to make your projects a little thicker. Let me show you exactly how to make your overlay mosaic crochet projects reversible. This is the chart that I've made for this video and I'm going to demonstrate how to make a reversible continuous overlay mosaic crochet swatch from this chart. I have the rows numbered from one through nine and it tells you what color, the main color or the contrasting color that's used across the whole row. Now the squares without any symbol inside are going to be back loop single crochet in the row color. And obviously row one is worked into your chains, but the rest of these rows will be back loop single crochet in the row color, not necessarily the color of the square. The squares with an A in them are an anchored double crochet on the wrong side in the row color. And I'm going to demonstrate that stitch for you. It's a little bit different than my regular anchored double crochet. The squares with the D are a front loop double crochet, and those are actually in the color that the square is. So you've got your main color with the darker squares and your contrasting color with the lighter squares. And the R is an anchor double crochet on the right side with the main color. And the R is only used on the last row to anchor the stitches on that last row. So let's get started with our swatch. 
I've already worked rows one and two and I've got 15 stitches across and I've got my 15 single crochet on row one with my main color and my 15 back loop single crochet on row two with my contrasting color and I'm doing my swatch in my comb technique. So if you don't know what that is, you can watch that video or you can just watch me doing it here. What I did at the end of each row is when there's the last loop on the hook, I put the yarn through that loop to secure it. And I'm going to hold that yarn across the top of the row to do my stitches on the next row. And I will insert my hook in the back loop of this first stitch and pull up a loop and then chain one. And that's how each row will begin is with pulling up a loop and chaining one. So let's look on our chart and see what we need to do for these stitches. We're going to start with a D, which is a front loop double crochet. Now this is not an anchored stitch. All the Ds are just the front loop double crochet that you typically do in overlay mosaic crochet. They're not anchored at all. So we're going to alternate between those and back loop single crochets. So we will start with a front loop double crochet. We're not going to work in either of these loops, but we're going to work in the front loop of the stitch right below that in the same color as the row that we're working. So we insert our hook from the bottom to top in that front loop, draw up a loop, yarn over two, and yarn over two. And that's our front loop double crochet. We are now working over our carried yarn to make this continuous. So we'll do a back loop single crochet in the next stitch. And we have a front loop double crochet again. So we yarn over and go to the stitch below our next stitch and work that front loop double crochet. Now you can see that when I'm working a front loop double crochet, I'm not encasing the carried yarn. And I'm going to skip the stitch behind that front loop double crochet. If we don't skip that stitch behind our front loop double crochet, we'll have the wrong stitch count at the end of the row. So we are changing this stitch into this stitch. We're not going to increase or decrease across the row. Now we're going to work, according to our chart, three back loop single crochet and another front loop double crochet. So we work in just the back loop of those single crochets and we are encasing our carried yarn as we go across here. So we've got three back loop single crochets and now we're ready for another front loop double crochet. Now if you are confused about what loop is below the next stitch, when you've done three single crochets here, you can look down here and skip three front loops down here. So this is our next stitch to go in for that front loop double crochet. And remember, we're not encasing the yarn on our front loop double crochet, but it's still just being carried across there. And we're going to skip that next stitch because we've done a front loop double crochet instead of working into that stitch. So we're going to do another three single crochets in the back loop. And another front loop double crochet. In that stitch below. And we did skip three stitches here, so that's the correct stitch. We're going to do three more back loop single crochets. And we're going to finish with a front loop double crochet. This will not be anchored in our last stitch, but when we do our next row, we're going to be anchoring that stitch. So we'll work in that front loop and do our last double crochet. 
in the front loop. So because this is my continuous overlay mosaic crochet or comb, I'm going to take my yarn. And here's my last loop that was on the hook. I'm going to put the yarn through from the back to the front of that loop. And I'm going to tighten the loop. And I like to make this last double crochet a little bit shorter because it can tend to get too tall at this end. So we just tighten that up and we're ready for our next row. We're going to switch back to our other color. And before we do that row, we want to adjust this carried yarn a little bit, make sure that it didn't get too loose on the back and we'll stretch this and make sure it's not too tight. So let's take a look at our chart and see what we do for our next row. We're going to use the contrasting color and we're going to start with the A. And the A is the anchor double crochet on the wrong side in the row color. So we're starting with our white yarn now. And we're going to insert our hook in the back loop of this stitch and pull up a loop. And we're going to chain one. Now the anchor double crochet on the right side was working in front. Now the anchor double crochet on the wrong side that we're doing to make this reversible is working in the back. So we're going to do the anchored portion by inserting our hook in that same loop and pulling up a loop. Then the double crochet portion is yarn over to start our double crochet. Then we're going to look at the back and we see that there's a lot of strands here. This strand here is the carried yarn across, so we want to go under that strand without splitting it. And then we need to know what is the back loop of our stitch in the row below. And this is the back loop right here. So we're going to go under the carried yarn and the back loop and pull up our loop. Now we've got our four loops on the hook and just like our other anchor double crochets, we'll yarn over and pull through the first two and yarn over and pull through the last three. And that's an anchor double crochet on the wrong side. Let's see what we do next on our chart. We've got a D, so we're going to do a front loop double crochet. So remember, Oh, I've made a mistake already, so let's go back. Here's my yarn at the end of my previous row, and I have not been working over it. So let's put that yarn across here, and let's work over it just like we're supposed to for continuous overlay mosaic. Let's put our hook in the back loop and pull up a loop and chain one. Now you can see that we've encased this yarn. So we've carried it across and we'll be ready to have it on our next row to use it there. So let's do that anchored double crochet on the wrong side again. We're gonna work into our back loop and over our carried yarn to pull up that loop. Then we're going to start our double crochet portion on the back, going under our carried yarn and into our back loop of that stitch. And yarn over and pull up a loop. There's our four loops. We yarn over and pull through the first two and yarn over and pull through the last three. And you can do this technique without carrying your yarn, but I really like to carry mine so I eliminate all those ends. All right, so our next stitch was the front loop double crochet. So we yarn over and go one row below into that front loop from bottom to top and do that double crochet. Now you can see that my carried yarn is not covered by that front loop double crochet. And here's the stitch that we need to skip. And then our next stitch is going to be another anchor double crochet on the wrong side. And after you get the hang of this technique, you'll know where your anchored double crochets on the wrong side go because 
they're always above a double crochet in the row below. So we're going to insert our hook in the back loop of that stitch, going around our carried yarn again, and pull up a loop. And there's our anchoring. Then we'll yarn over and go to the back, and here's our carried yarn and our back loop of that stitch in the row below. So we'll go under both of those and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. So it looks like a single crochet on the front, but it looks like a double crochet on the back. And this is where our reversible stitch is made. This is our anchored double crochet on the wrong side. And that's what makes it reversible. So on our chart, we've got two more single crochets, another double crochet, and an anchored double crochet. And I'll do that. And then we'll keep moving on here. So there's our two single crochets in the back loop, our double crochet in the front loop of the row below. We skip that stitch and we'll do another anchored double crochet on the wrong side. So we pull up a loop in that back loop of the stitch over our carried yarn. Then we yarn over for the double crochet portion, insert our hook under the carried yarn and into the back loop of that stitch on the row below. Now we've got our four loops, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through three. And I'm going to continue this across the row with two more single crochet, a double and an anchored, and I will meet you at my last anchored double crochet at the end of the row. Okay, here I am at the end of the row, and I'm going to demonstrate the last anchored double crochet on the wrong side. So we're going to insert our hook under the carried yarn and the back loop. So right in front of that front loop, we've got the two strands and we'll pull up our loop and that's the anchored part. And the double crochet part is the yarn over. And we're gonna look on the back and what I find easiest is to kind of pull this a little bit so I can see the front of the stitch because when I'm looking at the back of it, it's harder to get my hook in the right place. So here's the front of that stitch. I've got the carried yarn here and the back loop there, and that's the front loop. And I want to put it under the carried yarn and the back loop to do that stitch. And we're going to pull up that loop, and we've got the four loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two, and yarn over and pull through the last three. And you can see, that this stitch is now anchored in this row below and the one below that. So this was not being encased or anchored before, but now it is. So we're ready at the end of our row to pull up our big loop. And we're going to need a bigger loop on this one because I've got a huge skein of yarn to pass right through it. So here's my calm technique at the end of the row, pulling the yarn through from the back to the front of the loop, and I'm going to tighten that a little bit so that anchored double crochet on the wrong side is not too tall. And we will tighten that loop, and we're ready for the next row. So let's see what's going on on the next row. We're going to start with a front loop double crochet. We're going to work with our main color, which is our darker one. And then we'll have an anchored double crochet on the wrong side. And you can see that the anchored double crochet are always right on top of the double crochet in the row below. So I'll get that row started. We will carry our yarn across. We don't want to forget that if we're doing the comb technique. Insert our hook in the back loop with our carried yarn above it and pull up a loop and chain one. And now we're ready for our first front loop double crochet. So we're going to go in the front loop of the stitch below this one. 
from bottom to top and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. So we're starting to carry our yarn. Now we're going to do an anchor double crochet on the wrong side. So we'll insert our hook in that back loop going over our carried yarn and pull up a loop. Yarn over, go to the back side, insert our hook under the carried yarn and into the back loop of that stitch and pull up a loop there. We've got our four loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through three. So we've got our vertical line on the back side. We're working on our reversible stitches here. Now what do we do next on this row? We're going to do two single crochets, another front loop double, and another anchor double on the wrong side. We're going to follow these stitches across the row and I'll meet you at the end of row five. After I've done my all my stitches across. So we're going to encase the carried yarn with our single crochets, but we're not going to encase it with our front loop doubles. And we will encase it again with our anchored double crochets on the wrong side. And we are also encasing that yarn in the row below when we work that anchored section here, the double crochet section of our anchored double crochet on the wrong side. So I'll keep going across the row and meet you at the end. Okay, here I am at the end of this row and my last stitch is going to be another front loop double crochet. And remember it's not anchored here, we're going to do the anchoring on the next row. We'll pull up our loop and put our yarn through the loop from the back to the front. We don't want to get our other yarn messed up in there, okay? We only want this yarn. We don't want any tails or anything. We want to tighten that a little bit and tighten our loop. And now we're ready to do some more rows. Before we do any more rows, we want to make sure that our carried yarn is not too loose or not too tight. So we pull on that and we pull on our row to check that. Let's look at the back before we continue. You can see that all of these anchor double crochets on the wrong side have given me some nice vertical lines going down and that's what we're looking for. Now I'm going to continue with rows six through eight and work all the stitches on the chart and I will return when I get to row nine to show you how to do the anchored double crochets on the right side. All right, here I am. I have finished row eight and I'd like to show you my progress. You can see all the lines where they're supposed to be on the front and all the lines where they're supposed to be on the back. But the last row on our Revcom is slightly different because we need to anchor some stitches that wouldn't be anchored otherwise. So we'll pull our carried yarn across and we'll start with our main color and we'll go ahead and insert our hook in the back loop and pull up a loop and chain one. Now we're ready to see what we need to do on the chart. So our first stitch is going to be an anchor double crochet on the right side with the main color. And we're going to work that double cro anchor double crochet under both loops of the first stitch just for a little bit more stability. And in, we would have normally worked just a front loop double crochet into this loop, but we want to anchor the stitches now in this row. We don't want to have them hanging loosely. So we'll go ahead and insert our hook under both loops on the first stitch and pull up a loop and then yarn over and do the double crochet portion of our anchored double crochet on the front side. 
So we insert our hook from the bottom to the top in that front loop of the stitch below and draw up a loop. And we have the four loops on the hook. We yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through the other three. So this stitch is now anchored instead of hanging there. And our ne next stitch in the row will be an anchored double crochet on the wrong side. And we know that because we've already got a double crochet on the front side, so we need to do that anchored double crochet on the wrong side above it. So we'll put our hook in the back loop, going over the carried yarn and pull up a loop. Yarn over, go to the back side, find our carried yarn and our back loop, put our hook in there and pull up a loop. We've got our four loops on the hook, we'll yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the last three. Now those are the first two stitches in the row. We're going to do two single crochet in the back loop and another anchored double crochet on the right side. So we'll do one single crochet in the back loop and another single crochet in the back loop. And because it's not the first or the last anchored double crochet in the row, this one can go in the back loop of the stitch. So we'll pull up our loop in the back loop, yarn over, insert our hook from bottom to top in that front loop and pull up a loop. There's our four loops on the hook. We'll yarn over and pull through the first two and yarn over and pull through the last three. And that's what we're going to work across this row. We're gonna have our anchor double crochet on the wrong side above this double crochet and all of these stitches will be worked into or anchored into and I'll show you on the back here you can see that every stitch is worked into when a stitch is not worked into you have an empty back loop and you'll have that carried yarn across there too and that's where we would work our next anchored double crochet on the wrong side. So every stitch on row 9 will be worked into with either a single crochet or an anchored double crochet on the right side or an anchored double crochet on the wrong side. And the last stitch of this row will also start be worked like the first stitch under both loops for that anchor double crochet on the right side at the end. And then our swatch will be complete. Now, if you would like to practice this reversible continuous overlay mosaic crochet technique with this swatch, I've got a link in the video description to the free chart on my website. So go ahead and download that and give this a try because I really think you're going to enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed learning my RevCom technique to make your overlay mosaic crochet projects reversible. As you saw in the video, I made a mistake and quickly corrected it. I also made some mistakes when I was crocheting my reversible scarf that's behind me. In my next video, I'd like to teach you how to correct some of those mistakes that can easily creep in when you're doing a reversible overlay mosaic crochet project. So join me in that video to learn how to correct your mistakes, as well as the ones that I've made too. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more crochet videos, including more mosaic crochet videos. Thanks so much for watching and happy RevCom crocheting to you. If you've enjoyed this video, that was kind of, okay. If you, <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>